Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about pancreas cancer. The pancreas is important in blood sugar regulation because it produces insulin and glucagon, two chemicals that regulate blood sugar levels. Pancreatic cancer is cancer that's found anywhere in the pancreas. Pancreatic cancer is seldom detected at its early stages when it's more curable. This is because it often doesn't cause symptoms until after it has spread to other organs. If you are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, it's very important to know if it's an endocrine cancer or exocrine cancer. This video will discuss with you everything related to pancreatic cancer, its causes, when it is suspected, and is there a definitive treatment for it. So our role today is to answer most of your questions regarding pancreas cancer. Today we have Dr. Li, who is leading doctor at Pundang Chasek Hospital. He's going to discuss with us everything about pancreas cancer from an experienced medical point of view. Hi, Ume. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel so the next time you'll be updated with our new releases. Hello, Dr. Lee. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. can, can you present yourself to us? Uh, I am Dr. Suho Lee of the Bungdang Jisang Hospital. I specialize in heptobiliary surgery. Mm, all right. So today we'll be talking about pancreas cancer. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us what is pancreatic cancer and what are the reasons that lead to this cancer? Pancreatic cancer is diverse. But what we call pancreatic cancer mostly reoccurs to an endian carcinoma that occurs at the pancreatic duct. 85 to 90 percent of all malignant pancreatic neoplasms are endocarcinoma as of the pancreatic duct. And there are other types, but the anterior a subtype, is very representative. So we generally refer to pancreatic adrenocarcinoma as pancreatic cancer. Asinar cell anterior and IPM NS and such are other subtypes of malignant pancreatic neoplasms. But most anterior form in the pancreatic duct, and the cause for it is yet unknown. We only surmise that it is a complex result of both environmental and genetic factors. Right. So what are the, the examinations needed to diagnose pancreatic cancer? The most important exams for diagnosing pancreatic cancer are imaging and endoscopy. Supplementary exams are blood tests, especially for tumor markers. Imaging is used for symptomatic patients, those with present with pain or jaundice, an example being abdominal sonograms. The technology behind abdominal sonography has developed remarkably these days, which enables them to not only diagnose cancer, but also differentiate it with other diseases and detect liver metastasis. However, abdominal sonograms have their shortcomings in that its diagnostic capability is subjective and depends heavily on the examiner. And if the patient is obese or has abdominal gas, the accuracy can decline significantly. CT scans are the most important tests in pancreatic cancer diagnosis, in my opinion. It can signally diagnose pancreatic cancer and assesses its operability, and at the same time, measure disease progression objectively. MRIs are similar to CTs, but can more accurately detect liver metastasis. ERCPs, or endoscopic ultrasounds, are also possible diagnostic modalities. Blood tests can diagnose pancreatic cancer. However, it can detect rises in alkaline phosphatase, or GGT, and can serve as a reference when related complications occur for diagnosis. And although tumor markers CA19-9 rise in pancreatic cancer, it is nonspecific and also increases in pancreatitis, so it is not used for diagnosis, but rather for monitoring post-surgically, for reoccurrence or prognosis. Uh, doctor, let's talk about surgeries. What are the surgeries done to treat uh, pancreatic cancers? And what are the risk factors? Unfortunately, pancreatic cancer rarely presents with symptoms. And operable cases upon diagnosis accounts for only 20%. And surgery is the only proven curative treatment as of yet. The surgical method depends on where the cancer is located. If it is located in the pancreatic head, or the eucinate process, 
we perform a Whipple operation, or PPPD. It is in the body or tail. We perform a distal pancreatomy. So how often after the surgery a patient should come and get checkups? Checkups are done to detect reoccurrence, and pancreatic cancer reoccurs most commonly one to two years after surgery. Thus, we perform blood tests and imaging every three months in the first year after surgery, and in six-month intervals from the second year, then annually. So we just talked about reoccurrence. How often does it happen? Since pancreatic cancer is discovered lately and has a poor prognosis, it is relatively less important to talk about its reoccurrence, and it is higher than most other cancers. So I would like to mention two other parameters in its place. In 2018, the five-year survival rate is estimated to be 13% and the life expectancy post-surgery is about 20 to 24 months. Mm. So, hereditary factor in pancreatic cancer, does it affect the occurrence of uh, cancer? Yes, we know that KRAS mutation in the chromosomes are directly related to pancreatic cancer because about 90% of the pancreatic cancer patients have KRAS mutation. And on a related note, there's also a familial pancreatic cancer, which refers to the fact that those with pancreatic cancer history in their immediate family, especially if the family member was younger than 50, or there are more than one immediate family members with pancreatic cancer, have a 32 times higher risk of developing pancreatic cancer than those without. Mm. So after pancreatic cancer, is there a certain lifestyle that should be followed? The term lifestyle is too general. So I would like to focus on dietary habits. The cancer itself may cause diabetic symptoms or the surgical resection, which removes most of the pancreas and cause diabetes. And both the cancer and surgery can deteriorate appetite and nutrition for a long time. So adequate nutrition and diabetic diet are important after surgery. Thus, it is advised to visit the doctor or nutritionist on a regular basis for diet control. Okay. So every year, how many percent of people get pancreatic cancer? Statistically speaking, there are about 45,000 cancer patients in Korea in total. 7,600 of them are pancreatic cancer patients. It ranks 8th out of all cancers in Korea. In the U.S., about 45,000 pancreatic cancer patients occur annually, and it ranks as the second most common GI tract cancer, and fourth in mortality out of all cancers. About 13 to 14 new pancreatic cancer patients occur per 10,000 people every year. Okay, so out of these people, how many are cured? We used the term cured, who did not show reoccurrence after five years. About 13% of those who receive surgery survive, which is quite poor. Only about 20% of the patients are operable, and out of 20%, only 13% survive. Very low. Yeah. Okay. So does alcohol and smoking affect uh, pancreatic cancer? In the past, we thought alcohol was directly related to pancreatic cancer, but nowadays, we think frequent drinking causes pancreatitis, and this can serve as a risk factor for pancreatic cancer. Smoking, on the other hand, is a direct risk factor due to its carcinogens. Smokers have a 1.7 times higher risk of pancreatic cancer than non-smokers. Who is more likely to get pancreatic cancer? Is it women or men? Men have a 1.1 times higher incidence than women. Okay, final question, how can we prevent pancreatic cancer? 
As with all cancers, there's no specific prevention method. It is advised to quit smoking, weight reduction for obese individuals, and blood sugar control for diabetics. Since diabetes is itself a risk factor for pancreatic cancer, it is thus important to stick to your medication and control your diet. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Lee. Yeah. So today the doctor explained in detail everything related to this little malignancy. Thank you for joining us once again to that Cult Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll respond to you as soon as possible.